The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this uh, 12th day of October, Wednesday, and we're looking at this is Fed Speak Day, so we'll see what happens after 2.30 this afternoon. My suspicion is that we were going to a sideways pattern for a while. Uh, we've had some very optimistic rebounds uh, earlier on, and then the 8.30 PPI report came out, was uh, quite a little bit more than anticipated. Market dropped very sharply, uh, and we are looking at this particular point, the VIX index up 48 to 34.13. I'm going to focus all week on this VIX index. Why? Because for three weeks, it's it's managed to get into the Chapman Wave Inside Track Weekly down channel, the mini down channel. So far this week, as it did three weeks ago, where it popped above to 34.88 September, the week of September the 30th, and then closed down. And then now we've got Chapman Wave Roman candle from last week, meaning at any point this week, if there's a there's a, a one day, I'd say even maybe a three hour period where the VIX index trades under 30.50 and it's trading at 34.11 right now. That's 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 a huge drop. I mean, a huge drop. That would suggest that it's even going to go down to about the 28th level where it was uh, last week on the lows. And that would be very positive for the market. But trading above, you've got in this particular rule that I have for the Chapman Wave Roman candle at a, a potential high, if there is a close above the, the high of this, in other words, above the little wick, and so far it's quite a bit above it, I usually say what you do at that particular point, and you have to talk about a closing price, that means you have to go all the way to Friday. Um, so if at Friday at 4 o'clock the VIX index starts to drop sharply and closes underneath the high of last week, which was 34 Fifth, 34, no, it was 33.06. That would be a good sign to say now you've got the body of the candle, the, the, the body wet low, which is at um, 33. And that just says that 33 should be a support level. So it's a little complicated. Uh, we're looking at it and it had the same thing with the long-legged wick from three weeks ago. So everything's applying and saying that at this particular point, the MACD in the weekly chart is very strong. Nine is way over the 14 period exponential moving average. Stochastic's only at 77. It hasn't gone to 80%. But there is enough evidence. We're not yet midweek. We're close. We're, by the time Fed speaks, it'll be uh, midweek. Um, so we're just going to be watching this closely. Because if there's a pop uh, and then a close on a daily basis above 35, the market's going to become vulnerable. All right. Meantime, as I say, it kind of stuck in a range. And, and very often what happens is that it, we're, as you're getting closer to the Fed announcement, so that at 2 o'clock, uh, that's when news comes out. But up until about 1.30, if the market is up, it's probably going to pull back a little bit. If the market is down, it'll probably rally a little bit closer to unchanged. I don't know if it'll get to unchanged. But that's kind of what we see. So... Now, within this particular uh, pattern, there's a, there's a cup formation on uh, within the next couple of days. We'll be able to take a measurement from this high that was made at 34.88 on the 29th of September in the volat daily volatility index to see if there is a pullback without going very much above 34.88. Is the MACD higher than it was? Is the stochastic higher than it was at that particular level? Uh, is the nine period moving average still very strongly above the 14? So those are things that are going to tell us whether or not this volatility index is here to stay for a while in the higher level. All right, enough of that. Let's get to our story. Our story is that the Dow uh, is the nine period moving average is starting to make a W formation in the daily chart. 
The weekly chart it still looks just terrible. Uh, it's expanding. You can see, yes, the histogram is midweek, so we don't want really to talk about it as if it's closed, but it is a weekly chart. The stochastic is down at 7%. On balance volume is trying to make a V-shape uh, recovery, and it's in the process of doing that. But the daily technicals are different to the weekly technicals. The weekly technicals are just insistent at saying lower lows and lower highs until the trend changes sharply in the daily chart. That weekly chart must still be considered very negative. On the very short term, though, I've been discussing this in the Chapman Wave arch formation, the one that I call the dreaded H. Uh, in this particular instance, when we look at, let me just draw this, uh, I'll drink, bring it across. In this pattern, I'm always looking at straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, and a mix of one and two or one and three. So this is what we call the dreaded H because when in this, when there's a sharp move down, then there's an arch formation at a peak A or a peak B. There's a failure, and then it comes down and takes out the left side low, like it did there back in uh, August, like it did there back in September, and so far has not done in October. And remember, I've been totally fascinated with this whole aspect um, of September had the low in the Dow. The S&P has gone to a low low in October. Is it even possible for the Dow to have a low at 28,715 that remains in place for a good chunk of October? And uh, that would say sideways is a consolidation. As I said um, in the den a little while ago, I said, what did I say over here? I typed it in. I said, um, uh, remember, sideways is a position, as in narrow rectangle lasting a lot longer than your patience. And what do we have right here? In the, I don't know, I haven't looked at it for a little while. Yep, look, we've gone, basically we've gone sideways. Since that spike um, after the big sell-off that took us to the 35, 85-ish area in the E-mini, spirals up to the 36.18 area and comes back down. But basically, we're just going, we're treading water. And hopefully, it's not riptide, it's just treading water. So here we are. We're looking at a situation where there is some positivity in some of the technicals in the Dow daily, but... Price is the arbiter of the trend, not the technicals. And it's very often that we forget that. As price is going up, we say, uh, how can I do that? The technicals are weak. Or oh, price is going down. How can I do that? Technicals. No, price is the arbiter of the trend. In this particular instance, it is holding just a little mini trend line right here. Let me draw this in. And what I wanted to talk about today, and I mentioned this when I was interviewed by Tom yesterday, um, in the last hour of his show, Tom O'Brien show, uh, that the, uh, I wonder if I can do this. Let me, let me see. I'm going to go to the chart at the back, which has just more, is that the one? Hey, I'll just go to this. No, that's not the one I want. I want this one right here. Things are hidden behind this door. There we go. So let's go. Let's go. I will go. I'll show this much bigger and the much bigger pattern. And then, and then you can see it and see what I'm talking about. I think we're at the, at the cusp of a really important moment. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 98, SP's up $1.50. I'll be right back after this break. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So the Dow's up 117, but you see this pink line here. This is the uh, nine-period exponential moving average. You see the black line? That's the 14-period exponential moving average. You see the MACD is positive. It's green. The green, sorry, the green line is crossed above the 14 period move. Sorry, the ah, don't do that. The green nine period exponential moving average differential is above the slow moving 26 period exponential moving average in the MACD. And in the stochastic, we just about to see the green try to cross above the 14 period moving average. To, uh, why do I keep saying that? This is a stochastic which is going to cross above the uh, slow moving average. So the red is slow and the green is faster. And you've got a little V-shaped pattern. But most importantly, look, you've got the histogram of the MACD positive, which gives you some strength, but the market has ignored it. That's why I'm saying price is the arbiter of the trend. But you have the W formation in the nine period under the 14 period moving average. So to look, just take this price here, to get that pink to cross above the black, you probably have to get at least into this territory again. It did it before, but that's after a massive move down. Look how long, from the, a couple of, about a week after we went short the, the Dow, which was right over there, just off the August high. Um, via the DOG, and we still remain short because that's an intermediate term call, that pink nine period moving average, it even tried to cross, but it deflected lower back in uh, mid-September. And now, for the very first time, you're starting to see an improvement. And that's suggesting to me that there doesn't have to be much good news, but just the hint of good news could give you a spike Spikes are not good enough. You have to hold to get this nine to start moving above the 14. There has to be both velocity to the upside and then momentum. So torque and momentum. Remember, I use the stochastic as the torque indicator and the MACD as the um, basically the sustaining of momentum. Well, in this particular instance, you've got out of my three, that's the MACD, the stochastic and the on-balance volume, all three are weak. 
But to get all three, uh, sorry, between the nine and 14 period moving averages and the stochastic and the on balance, those three are weak. The only strong one is the MACD, but you can't do something by itself. It's got to, it's got, it needs help. So to get the uh, Dow Industrial trading at 29,324, up 78 points right now, to have this pink move above, you're going to have to get into this range that was up in the uh, October the 5th, where it went to 30,454. It's going to need to do that. And with the news so far, first of all, the PPI, if that was even just a hint of positivity, we would be up 300 points at least. And that would say, well, maybe by the time Fed comes out with its uh, Fed speak today too, all they need to do is say, we're beginning to see a little moderation in the uh, increase in activity on the, or the premium in the inflationary side. And that's good. Right now, whatever they say, they're going to still have to harken back. So this is for the end of the day to really turn very positive. We're going to need a lot of encouragement from whatever your reading is or the market's reading of what the Fed says and what the book says. So all I can say is that those are the numbers to look at. 30,500 would become a really big improvement and help that nine period to cross above the 14. And it can't just go there once. It needs to stay there for a little while. And number two, within the context of support, we haven't taken out that left side low of 28,715. So this is, we're on the cusp, either a spiking a little bit to the upside. I don't know about a lot to the upside, but enough on the upside to at least get back towards the 20, uh, 30,100, 200 area, which would be really good. But if we take out the low of three days ago, which was 29,000, it's called 29,000, we're 29,295 right now. That's going to make that dreaded H pattern that we were talking about, that red, you remember, straight line down, then an arch formation, you have your straight line down. Yep, it's at an angle, but it's really like an H, a sloping H. And that says, oh, like the S&P. Let me show you the S&P now. I must, mustn't forget that this is just a little diagram that I'm showing you here. I want to get rid of it as soon as we uh, finish the little story right here. And you can see struggling doji candle yesterday. So far, doji candle today. I don't think it'll be a doji by the end of the day. But we've taken out that left side low. The MACD was positive. It went negative. Now you've got all four. You've got the nine under the 14. You've got the MACD uh, just to negative over the last two sessions. Stochastic still very poor. And, the, and you've got a flat on balance volume. So we're in a situation here where there is a chance, just based on a purely technical picture that says the selling – Although we saw it earlier on when the, when the Dow futures were up um, over 200 points and then coming down very sharply, um, that this market is still very susceptible to selling pressure. Okay, got that out the way. QQQ, now we're back on our regular charts. QQQ uh, made a lower low. It has three days in which to, two, maybe three days in which to break above the left side low that it took out in the dreaded H pattern. That's 267.10. We're at 262.64. It's going to take a lot to get us right back there. And even to, uh, to think of the 270.44 level in the uh, MACD, oh, the 270 level in the nine period exponential moving average, that's going to that's going to require a lot. And you can see in the weekly chart, I, I drew in the potential for a cup formation, a second cup formation. So far, all that's happened is made lower lows in the arch formation, in the weekly chart, and the monthly chart is not looking good. Leg B. So there's just a purely technical oversold condition is needed here to say, you know, we're washed out. Now we just need to see some buys, maybe for shorts to reload, whatever it is. Uh, maybe new buyers to come in, and that's what we're looking at. IWM, let's do this quickly. IWM uh, still hasn't taken out the 163.28 uh, left side low of, uh, of uh, late September. It's at 180, uh, 166.08 right now, holding pretty well. And the weekly chart, surprisingly enough, over four weeks so far hasn't taken out the 162.48 June low 
Now that's important. All right, now we're going to get to the nitty gritties of what we, a lot of people are looking at. Gold is down 10 at 1675, off the low of the day, but yep, it's down. The nine period moving average has just so far, the day is young, but we've got an S meaning sell. Just this is on a purely technical basis for the nine under the 14. It'll show up tomorrow because you have to wait for the entire day for it there. But the MACD is good. Stochastic is not bad at 58%. On balance volume is not too bad either. So uh, this is a digestive phase after a spectacular move going from about 1630 all the way to 1736. Uh, also, and now we're at 1676. But it's really not a good chart, Matt, and certainly not in the uh, weekly. Look at silver. Silver trading right now, uh, down yet again at 19.03 after a fantastic peak D that was made in the left side, right side price time match. Failed under the 200 period moving average is now at 19.03, down 45 cents. And real quickly, as we get to the break, we want to look at the dollar. Well, the dollar is up 11 ticks at 113.38. There's a lot going on now. I've got all the stocks that we will go through when we return. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Zone. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, DXAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're looking at the Dow up 145. S&P is up six. Uh, the day is young. Anything can happen. So let's look. So the DXY is running on the right side. This is a the time that it's taken to move to the upside means that if by the end of the day there's a sudden spike that extends this leg right here, which is really a gray A because it's under the previous peak D. I still haven't been able to put a down arrow yet because the nine period didn't go underneath the 14 period moving average, but all the other technicals were very weak. So the dollar is saying that at 113.37, 114.78, the previous high. If suddenly today there's a spike to the upside, that's going to be really positive. 
But if for any reason, we don't even know what the reason is, we take out, in the next two days, we take out the low of uh, yesterday, which is 112.41. 112.41. I would prefer to say lower than that. I'm going to make it 112.20, which is the 14-period moving average. Now, if it takes it out in the next two days, that's one thing. If it closes under that, there's a chance that I can talk about an arch formation forming. This is the dreaded H pattern in the dollar. Wow. I don't know what will do that, but that would be a big surprise to, to a lot of areas, sectors in the market, because that would say the dollar's pulling back. There's now a chance, just for the moment at least, that the market could have a little a, a positive response because the higher dollar really is impacting, not every single day, but a lot of the time, the higher dollar is really impacting the market. It's certainly impacting the uh, multinational profits, you know, these companies. Okay, those are the parameters. Above 114.78 is just spectacular action. Might even have recycled the weekly chart. You can see this trend line. Unbelievable how trend lines form. How does a trend line know that every time it rallies in a diagonal pattern, and what would you call this? I'd call this, oh, where is my protractor? Did, oh, do I, I like to always put it within reach, but of course right now it's not in reach. My eye says that's not 45 degrees, um, but it's pretty much a 40-something 40, 40 degree uh, upside angle. You know what? It could even be close. Maybe... Oh, I always put it just close by and it's just too far away. Um, I can't even see it right. Oh, I can't. Okay. If I can get it later on, I'll get it. But in the meantime, what we're looking at, look at this resistance area. It still gives it room to run all the way to 115 and off, maybe even 116 if it's next week because the weekly chart. But that, if it breaks above 114.78, this extends leg C in the monthly chart. That means... No matter what we think, the dollar is just so powerful, it's going to impact the market longer. Okay? And if it starts to pull back and make that gradation, it it's giving the market some time in which to run. Now, one of the reasons why, within the context of my opening call subscribers, we've been, we've been really, I wouldn't even say day trading the diamonds, the DIA. This is near term. It's got nothing to do with the short position. And... Even today, we we actually got a little, just a little bit more aggressive. Uh, so far, we could be very aggressive if other things happen, but I, I'm not interested. Right now, there are parameters that we have set, and that's as simple as that. I do not want um, for subscribers to 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 uh, change the philosophy of having built up a big cash position. You can just step aside until we get. Uh, a really good, decent low that is a tradable low for weeks, not just days. Um, and then there's a lot. I mean, I'd spoken about Caterpillar. I said, look at the action of Caterpillar, how nice it is. 180.40 up 65 cents today off the 160 low of two and a half weeks ago. Uh, this is this is not bad. Uh, a weekly chart says, hey, what are you talking about? Monthly chart says, ay, ay, ay. But right now on a short-term V-shaped pattern, why is it cyclical like Caterpillar doing so well? Well, let's just do this. Wheat. Does wheat? Um, there's no other way I can count it. Uh, I suppose there is. That could be an A, B, C, D. Oh, I haven't thought of that. But wheat is within an up channel. It's at the bottom of the up channel. It is really testing the support level. Weekly chart is just okay. But it has had a pretty decent rally from the 736 level in the continuous contract to the 1950s, it's trading at 88 point uh, and three quarters right now, or 889, down 12. So I'm watching this closely because the 200 period moving average in the daily chart has been like a, a fulcrum for it to move up and down and up and down sideways. Look at soybeans. Soybeans is coming off the 200 period moving average, but it's had a very sharp uh, decline from the 1500s down to the 1340s. Uh, and it's trading right now at 13, 82 and a half, up six and a quarter, stuck in this lower range. Corn. Corn had a fabulous move up. I didn't know what to call that. Now, there again, I should I, I should have done this. 
This could be A, B, holding for a long time. This could be, well, whatever it is, it's up near the upper part of the range. It's trading down two and three quarters at 690 and a quarter. Holding very nicely in the upper ranges with a nine period above the 14. And then sugar, this is part of the DBA, which we are still long, the DBA from the 13s. It's trading at 20 right now. Now, this is a leg E in sugar. Beautiful move up in sugar. And the MACD is good. The stochastic's flat at 93%, so sugar can hold you even if it pulls back. Weekly charts starting to improve. And you've got this double cup formation in the, in the monthly chart. Uh, I'm, I'm watching this very closely because this is part of the DBA. This is what's been helping the DBA rally instead of pulling back because some of the gr other grains are very weak. So we're looking at the soft commodities doing uh, overall doing okay. Now, I wanted to go to crude oil. Crude oil is pulling back after this big move up from the 76s all the way to the 93, 94 level, trading at 87.54 right now, uh, down $1.70 in the continuous contract, and lower lows and lower highs in the weekly chart. And what I've been saying is some of these really big moves to the upside that suddenly fail in like a leg A or a leg B where the A is just like one bar, and it's really like a single move up, We've seen this happen many times in many of the chart patterns that we look at, and the pullback can be extremely severe. So if crude oil holds the 200 the period moving average in the 86 area, it's at 87.62 right now, that's going to suggest that the, if there is another rally going into this coming Monday, <laughs> excuse me, if over the weekend, you know, whatever the news is, it turns out to be positive for crude oil to rally, now, maybe not positive for the general market, that says that if there is a move by an index over the whole of next week, give it a week, whereby it corrects them, this little bit of a pullback and it goes over 90, let's call it 94, 93.64 was the high uh, in the continuous contract three days ago. And this inside track repellent zone, remember, I wanted to talk about that. I spoke about it yesterday. I'll talk about it again today. Look how successful drawing in just simple trend lines, this narrow uh, channel at the bottom declining. And this, or in the context of a down, big, bigger down channel, you've got the outer borders with that little Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone inside track re, uh, repellent zone, and we've got other moving averages. Uh, we, uh, sorry, we've got trend lines that are all suggesting that if there is a close, any day between now and Friday, above the 94, especially 95 level, all of a sudden, the trend has changed for crude oil, because on the, not the weekly, but the shorter term chances, it could still go to a C and a D. So I'm watching closely because any calls below 80 forces, ah, ah, crude oil is a chop. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 128. And as I said, we've got a lot of stuff to look at. But of course, we also need to look at the TLT. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So looking at the TLT, down another seven cents at 99.79, under par, this is amazing. Uh, we're talking about something that made 179.70 in March of 2020. Here we are two and a half years later, and it's down to 99.81. Two and a half years before that high, you can go back, and, uh, well, it was not quite two and a half years. It was down at 111.90, and that was November, yeah, November of 2018, 111.90. Screamed up to 179.70. And lo and behold, I never did the left side, right side price time match. We've taken out that 111.90 uh, 90 twice now, once at the 102 level uh, back in June before it rallied for two, two months, and then it just turned down, and now it's hitting this monthly inside track support level. If it closes... On a monthly but if it goes under, that's one thing. But if it closes under, say, 97.50 in um, October, whew, that's not a good sign at all. All right. So we're looking at the, the inverse, which is the TBT. And the TBT, at this particular point, I've got it as an alternate count F slash B with a little doji candle formed yesterday. And today it's a red candle. Most importantly, the MACD is good. This is the daily. The 9 is way above the 14. The stochastic's at 88%. I can't say flat because it hasn't even moved sideways for uh, because it got there so quickly. But so far, 88 is good. And the, the on-balance volume did pull back a tad, uh, having become a little bit overbought. In the weekly chart, I've got a G slash C in this cup formation. And more importantly, it is in the leg D in the ultra short Lehman 20 year T bond ETF. So it's the inverse, and this has gone to a leg D to the upside after heating 14.28 in August of 2020. So within that context, is that a spectacular move? And all the technicals in the monthly chart are extremely positive. And here we do have a flat stochastic at 91% in the weekly chart. So all I can say is that price is the arbiter of the trend. If there is a push today or by Friday's close, if there is a close above the high that was made a few days ago uh, at, uh, what, what, what was that, 30, 30, 3397, and we're at 3342, that's not very far away. If there is a close above that, um, that's just suggesting that yields are just unyielding. If you look at the TNX, so the question came up, could you look at the 10-year? The Let me just do this right now. Yeah, the 10-year, is there a correlation that you can see between the longer one, the 30-year? And so what I am looking at here in the TBT is basically 20 years or more. This is only 10. This has gone a little bit further. It is very close 
to the high that was made, the TNX in the continuous contract, 39.92 was on the 27th, and today's 78. It's just gone, whoa, 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 let me do this again. 39.92, today's high is 39.78. It's an eye blink away from either being repelled with a double top or breaking sharply above or just immediately starting a pullback. We'll see what happens here because if this is a G, one pin in the weekly chart going one penny above says you've got to consider that that is a new leg up. And the only way I can count it, and whew, the only way I can count at this particular point is to say that could be a leg B. That means the TNX, um, this is the 10-year T note at 39.49. Uh, we got to watch this closely because that's a new count. That would say that's probably a leg B to the upside and leg D in the monthly chart. So all put it together, it just says uh, the, so far – the uh, the charter that the Fed feels that it has of pushing rates higher to slow down the economy, uh, that's still in place. And we'll see if that's re reaffirmed this afternoon and the market just does not like it, drops very sharply, or is there's just enough wiggle room to say, you know what, there could be a little bit of a hiatus right here. What, I don't know, what, what would create the hiatus if there was a PPI? Maybe it's tomorrow's CPI uh, report. We'll see. Or oh, Friday. Is it Friday? Friday's CPI. All right. Well, in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at, we've just made an H pattern in the one-minute chart. Still stuck within this range and watching it very closely. Now, okay, here we go. Um, deer. Caterpillar, uh, caterpillar we did. Deer is a little bit different. It has had a very nice at any peak B, peak, uh, peak A, B, C. It's at a leg C right now. Could make a peak B if it doesn't go above yesterday's high. It's down 4.28 to 359. Um, it is not bad when you're looking at, uh, now I can get rid of this oval pattern because it did everything that we were looking for. Uh, let me see if I can get rid of it. Yep, there it goes. Um, and now what we're looking at is that basically if you're looking at deer and company tractors, farm equipment, I'm going to do something here that is a little bit different to what you normally see. I'm putting in the monthly chart. I'm putting in a big oval. I had a small one, and that one worked out for the pattern that we were looking for. And now I'm putting in the big one. Is this a major top or is it going to be a leg D above the high sometime in 2022, very early 23, above the 446.76 high of April? Oh, big question. My eye says there's a greater chance it's going to retest the 330 level. It's a 359 right now. Uh, I should say 354 is the 200-period moving average. And if it takes it out, then... Uh, somewhere in the gap of 348 would be the next support level. So that's I did that. Oh, I, I, I'm not sure why we want to look at this, but IBM just uh, was on a list that some people said uh, one of the stocks, you had spoken about IBM earlier on in the year that it was holding quite well. Why was it doing that? And it's in the, now much more in the information and cloud enterprise software. When you look at it compared to um, CRM, I mean, look at the Salesforce making a lower low today. Unbelievable. It's gone from 311.25. This was a leader in the cloud uh, computing space to 140 right now. <laughs> it's it's uh, I'm more, more than a 50% decline. So IBM in that context, I'm still very impressed that it's holding. I've got nothing to do with long, short, nothing like that. I'm just saying I'm impressed that it's holding better than some of the others. Look at Crowd. Some people said um, uh, two days ago I was asked whether I'd look at um, the uh, cybersecurity stocks. I didn't do that uh, yesterday. Uh, no, when was it? Yeah, over the weekend. So, yes, look, CrowdStrike holding cybersecurity, 298 was the uh, November high. It plunged down to um, the 130 level. And it's rebounded, and now it's turned around from the 181 to 150 right now. Look at this arch formation from a peak D. You remember peak? How important is peak D? Look at this peak D in the weekly. Look at the lower peak D. I never like to see a peak D under the previous high. That's usually a bad sign. And look at this. How important is in the Chapman Wave methodology? How important is a peak D? What about that? 179.70 was the peak D high in the uh, bonds, in the TLT, and uh, a little bit of a pullback from 179 down to uh, 99. So it is important if you're looking at um, hack. 
Yes, heck, there comes heck. Heck is all oh, and a lower low today. I'm, this is cyber security. And I did a phantom peak to get it to a peak D in the monthly ch a chart. Find cyber security. Is bug the same thing? Bug? Yeah, bugs also made a peak D and pulling back sharply. Well, I'll be back. Dow's up 99. SP is unchanged. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. One more segment to go. A couple of stocks that we need to look at. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So within this market, um, if you look at certain, for instance, Caterpillar, why is Caterpillar running, uh, not great, but it's rallying. Why is our rider systems, supply chain, transportation, fleet management solutions, 93.05 was the high, in this year, 2022, it was way, way down in the 20s at some point uh, back in 2020. Uh, why is it holding so well? Look at this chapter we've inside track uh, in the weekly chart. It's right there. It's almost like the VIX index. And look at this, a peak B and holding very nicely in the daily chart. Is it because there's discussions I see um, in the den, hearing rail unions turned down agreement have until November the 19th. Hey, maybe they're looking at that, and this is a way of some kind of a form of transportation. I don't know, but I think now I'm, I'm starting to see for subscribers areas that I'm looking at that are suggesting we could start more, I can't even call them intermediate term, long positions, but we could start positions that seem to have a little bit of independence independence from the general market. It doesn't have to be these, but I'm just saying there are enough stocks I'm seeing that say you don't just have to be 
totally negative about everything because there are some signs of strength. And all you do is you put in your stops and you say, okay, do what you got to do. So I needed to get that out. Just a real quick question about the UVXY. I don't think I can do it on the, uh, on the, let me just type it in here. UVXY, UVXY. Uh, I'll do that quickly in the on the 120 minute chart. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. I won't run out of time because I'm going to get it right now. And, uh, so it's not the it's not the 60 minute that you asked me about, but it is the 120 minute chart. And I looked at this um, yesterday, but, uh, but during the day, and then I forgot. Peak A, peak B, peak C, and now it's just made a D. So this is really important. This is the VIX index, the Pro Shares Ultra VIX. Just make it as simple as possible. If after 2:30 this afternoon, instead of skyrocketing, the VIX index actually starts to pull back. And he's able to go from 33.73 right now into the low 32s or lower. That's going to really help the market rally. This is a very important moment. Have a great day.